Uh, hi, we don't have your camera. Hello. This is Craig Sams and Satish Kumar uh, celebrating Grow Local Live on today, International Permaculture Day. Satish, you've just finished 40 years, or not finished, you've just completed, completed 40, your 40th year of editing Resurgence magazine. Uh, there isn't a concept of perma-publishing, but that is quite long for one person and one magazine yes. to be in such a close relationship. Yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, it is a perma-publishing because it is a kind of publishing which had its own rhythm and it has its own harmony. So in a way, Resurgence is implicitly a permaculture magazine. Okay. And, and therefore, permapublishing, permaculture is part of the same thing. Because we need to build systems which can sustain themselves and remain resilient. We have developed uh, Resurgence publication in such a way that it is um, a not-for-profit, so it's a charity, uh, Resurgence mm -hmm. Trust. And in 40 years of my editing, we have never been uh, under any uh, debt or loan, or we have never been in kind of red, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So Parma Publishing means that you should work and publish and, and do your things within your means rather than extending out of your means. So in the same way as we live within the means of the earth. That's a permaculture. And so uh, what your garden and your land and your earth can provide you, you live within it. So in the same way as the magazine, what our subscribers and our members give us, uh, within that income, we have maintained the magazine. When the number of subscribers grow, then uh, the uh, number of uh, editions grow or number of copies grow. Uh, but we keep within the income. We don't spend yeah. any more than the, our income. That's the principle. Well, I've, I've been a subscriber almost since the beginning, yeah. off and on, but, you know, it's a regular part of my life. Yeah. Um, I think you might want to mention that there is an offer for Permaculture Day. Yeah. Uh, if subscribers now get five pounds off the annual That's right. subscription That's fee, right. That's right. which so we are making this special offer on Permaculture Day yeah. for anyone who is listening to this program or participating in the International Permaculture Day, they can become members and subscribe to Resurgence uh, five pounds off. So instead of yeah. 30 pounds, you pay only 25 pounds. Yeah. And we are also collaborating with Permaculture Day in every way and promoting permaculture through our magazine well, and through our website. Well, almost every issue has something that is within the philosophical arena of permaculture. So exactly. Yeah. It's, 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 and, yeah. and the essence of the magazine is yeah, yeah. about... And I have developed a trinity in the magazine which relates to permaculture in a bigger way. And that trinity is soil, soul, and society. So can you expand on that a bit? Because yeah. for those who haven't seen your TED lecture, yeah. although there is an excellent TED lecture yeah. of Satish explaining this, but... Yeah, so ahead. because um, uh, any great movement try to encapsulate their spirit and their mission and their vision in three words like the French Revolution had uh, Egalité, Liberté, Fraternité. Uh, the New Age movement had mind, body, spirit. Uh, the, the Christian religion has Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So three words generally encapsulate the vision and the mission of a movement. So we are now in the movement of organic, uh, more holistic, uh, ecological, sustainable, resilient future. How do we describe it? So uh, I have made these three words, soil. So we put, because we come from the earth and we return to the earth, all our food, our clothes, our housing, our energy, everything comes from the earth. And therefore we put soil before anything else, soil at the top. If we take care of the soil, soil will take care of us. This is the key. And therefore 
um, uh, people being in touch with the soil, touching the soil, even a little a little um, a bed uh, in your windowsill um, with yeah. the soil and a little compost and a little plant. So being in touch with nature. So soil world represents the natural world. And so when you touch the soil, you are walking on the soil, you are walking on the earth, walking among the trees, you are related to nature. And you are not seeing yourself as separate, disconnected. Uh, humanity separate from nature. Nature there for us to control, to, to use, to exploit, but we are separate. So I put soil first. And then I also include that we also need to have a soil. Um, soil needs to have a soul quality because soil has soul. Soil is soulful. Soil is alive. Soil is not machine, but it's organic uh, organism. And therefore, those soul qualities are represented through our relatedness, our wholeness, our compassion, our love of nature, our love of humanity, our love of um, higher um, values than just um, uh, existence or just subsistence. And so I put soul in the middle. And then I say, but we also need to take care of humanity. Uh, so social justice, social um, equality, uh, social care, um, people looked after, so whether you are old or young or ill or uh, handicapped or whatever condition you are. If you are a human being, you are a member of the human family. And therefore, we are one together and we take care of each other, this mutual interest. So this way, soil, soul, society. These are the three words. And, and Resurgence magazine had been promoting these uh, concepts of ecology, of spirituality and, uh, and of social justice as a continuum rather than three fragmented movements. Because yeah. some people only emphasize social justice. Other people only say environmental justice and sustainability. Yeah. Some people will say only uh, spiritual values. I say these are three connected. Yeah, and the three being greater than the sum of its parts. Yes, that's right. Yeah. that's right. This is local, the local food yeah. day celebration yeah. Yeah. of the International Permaculture Day. Yeah. Um, you live in Devon. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is quite, but you're not near Totnes, which is sort of the transition town, yeah. the home yeah. of transition towns, where, if you like, the localist and the locavore movement yeah. Yeah. really sort of has. Yeah. No, actually, I started Schumacher College, which is at Dartington, not far from yeah. Totnes, okay. and um, and we collaborate with transition town movement very closely. So all our teachers who come to teach at Schumacher College go and speak yeah. in town, in Totnes, and, and the audience of the, uh, of the town and permaculture uh, movement as well as a, a transition town movement. They are both connected. Permaculture particularly because transition town movement has a, a wing where we say that uh, if somebody has a garden uh, but doesn't have time or skill to garden, and other people don't have a garden, but have a time and skill to garden. We match them together. And that's a kind of permaculture way of transition town. And we collaborate with them. So Schumacher College, transition town movement and permaculture are in a kind of, you can say, um, working together. And it sort of re-emphasizes soil, soul and society. Exactly. Uh, you know, just, just sharing a garden and you exactly. Know, exactly. having people who... Well, I have... Just outside of Hastings, yes. slightly larger than a garden. Yes, it's yes. Uh, eight hectares, of which most is woodland, but yeah. there are a couple of acres of field and three acres of orchard. Yeah. And we now have a group called Stone Link Community Growers. Yes. You'll see them tomorrow. Yes. Uh, it's 20 people yes. who come and plant vegetables. We have artichokes and uh, Miss Scanthus green, mm -hmm. and it's becoming uh, more permanent as it evolves. You know, yeah. some crops, lettuces, you can't grow in a permaculture yeah. way, but we're following very strictly the yeah. Oliver Dowding, uh, no system, no yeah. dig system. Yeah. So is it Charles Dowding? Yeah. 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 Um, but also uh, the natural farming movement of Masanobu Fukuoka and yeah. all that is part of the no digging and, and disturbing soil as minimum as possible, yeah. as little as possible. But in, in your work, you have also developed uh, a new way of composting and carbon uh, sequestration uh, through right. biochar. Um, are you using that um, 
uh, matter in your garden and in your in your orchard? Well, in my garden since 2010, yes. we've applied a kilo of biochar per square meter of yes. ground. Yes. We did that in April of last year yes. at the farm. Yes. Um, the community growing group yeah. are just saying the difference this year from mm. last year because yeah. it's quite heavy clay. Yes. But now there are worms all through it. There's a whole is the soil has become alive. Yes. Uh, it's not just you know worms are the sort of top of the food chain in soil. You know yes, what right. you can't see are the mycorrhizal fungi, the actinomycetes bacteria, the whole army of. I shouldn't use the word army because they're cooperative, not yeah. combative. Yeah. But the whole collection of different microorganisms yes. that collaborate with a plant to make it grow and yeah. keep it healthy and also defend it from the pathogenic yeah. fungi and organisms yeah. that otherwise you need to use fungicides and pesticides and all that sort yes, of thing. That's right. um, what I also find, though, going on to the soil and society side, yeah, yeah. I had an allotment for yeah. 20 years, 19 yeah. years. I just gave it up yeah. a few months ago yeah. because when we work at the community group yes a it's a much bigger space if yeah. you divide it by 20 it's yeah. still much like five like five allotments each yeah but because everybody's sharing the work we yeah. come there there's a list of jobs to yeah. do yes. um you know when you've done something and the, you know it's all decided socially yes but at any given time there are yeah. two or three people working on any one when it was with an allotment, you go to the allotment, you say, hello, John, hello, yeah. Mary, or whatever, yeah. and then it's you and yeah. the cooch grass and the yeah. weeds, yes, and yes, you know, yes. it's a lonely, lonely, job. lonely way yeah. of doing it. Yeah. This, bringing it together like that, yeah. actually, many hands make light work, yes, comes yes. to mind, yeah. and everybody really enjoys it. And there's yeah. a real community building yeah. around it. Yeah. Yeah. Now that it's spring and things yeah. are really starting yeah. to happen, yeah. The no, I like it very much. I like it very much because I think working together is also builds a community, a sense of community. So sense of place with the garden and a sense of community of working together. So I think it's a wonderful model that you have developed. But can you also say that at the moment our world at large, China, um, America, uh, Europe, we are a hugely meat-eating and meat-growing society. In a permaculture worldview, what kind of diet will be a sustainable diet which does not create global warming and climate change and, and carbon uh, emission into the atmosphere? What kind of uh, food system will you advocate with your experience? I'm, I'm vegetarian. Yeah. I know you are. Um, but I'm not strict. Yeah. And in fact, I even had lamb in January yeah, yeah. in the Middle East in yeah. a certain situation where yeah. it just felt, you know, I was comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if everybody ate the yeah. amount of meat that you never eat meat, I eat it like once every few years. Yeah. Um, but even if people just ate meat once or twice a week, yeah. and this is what Paul McCartney tried to do with Meat Free Mondays, was yeah. just get people to stop for one, one day, day a week. Yeah. Um, but if if we went back to the sort of level of meat consumption of our healthy yeah. great grandparents or grandparents, yes. it would free up billions, not millions, billions of hectares yeah. of land. Yeah. If we let that land just regenerate with forest, yes. that would take so much carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere so quickly yeah. that we would be at the risk of yeah. a new ice age. Yes. Okay, so there has to be a balance. You yeah. know, we are, there are so many people on the planet mm. that whatever we do yeah. can have a very negative effect on exacerbating global warming yeah. or actually create global cooling, yeah. which sounds eccentric, yeah. Yeah. but, you know, it's happened before. We had a little ice age when mm. the world's population dropped in the... 1400s and yeah, 1500s yeah, yeah. so it can go both ways yeah. but what we need to do now mm. is the most painless way yeah you know if you gave to somebody and said okay give up your car give up air travel yeah or reduce your meat consumption by 50 percent yeah most people would make that choice, choice yeah. and the way you make that choice is by putting a price yeah. on carbon emissions yeah 
meat eating is huge carbon emissions. Yeah. It's a major contributor to climate change. Yeah. Cut that in half. Yeah. And then you don't need to worry so much about yeah. air travel and the other things. And yeah. that's at the moment we don't we don't make those choices yeah. on the basis yeah. of the market because the one key thing, carbon, mm. Mm. is being ex- it's being priced. It's not being priced. Mm. It's being left out, and mm. the price is being paid. But it will be paid by our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren who yeah. will have to deal yeah. with the climate catastrophe yeah. that potentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Could come. But that's a wonderful. What you are talking about is a, a good way to deal with the situation that we are faced with, catastrophic situation of climate change. And uh, so in this um, uh, billions of hectares of land, so you we will plant trees, more, more like Bengali Mathai did, uh, a green belt movement. Is yes, that the kind of yes, vision you have? Yes, and uh, the, the Men of the Trees, which was founded in 1923, yes. Uh, Richardson, Barb, Baker, they've yeah. planted three t- trillion trees yes. a- across Britain, the U.S. Yeah. They restored the Dust Bowl in the yeah. 1930s. Yeah. You know, trees can do a lot more yeah. to help the climate than yeah. sheep or goats yeah. or cattle. Yeah. And the, you know, if you look, there are three billion hectares of pasture. There are yeah. one and a half billion hectares of arable land. Yeah. Of that one and a half billion, 80% of that land yes. is growing soybeans and corn to feed to animals for people to eat. It is so inefficient. Even yeah. Bill Gates said recently, you know, we should yeah. look at the vegetarian alternatives to meat. If people want that particular texture, you know, we can make it. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not, not difficult. impossible. Not it's not impossible. impossible. But you have so many people, so yeah. many industries, yeah. agribusiness, yeah. the meat business, McDonald's, yeah. Yeah. locked in yes. to this production system yeah. that requires genetic modified yeah. sea soy, yeah. requires BT corn. Yeah. You know, get rid of all that. Yeah. You know, I'm from Nebraska originally in yeah. the Midwest. You yeah. know, my grandfather plowed the prairie. Yeah. It had a hundred tons of carbon per hectare. Yeah. If you go there now, it has five tons. Uh, All the rest of that carbon went into the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. And is part of the problem that we all face now. Yeah. And it's so easy to put it back. Yeah. You know, so I think the permaculture movement need to embrace this perspective quite closely. Because at the moment, permaculture has more focus and emphasis on small uh, garden and how energy and, and the composting and all that all connected system is very beautifully presented. But uh, I don't think they have enough emphasis on this uh, uh, re- reducing our meat consumption and increasing our tree cover. Certainly. I mean, we work quite closely with Sarah Pugh, who's yeah. the permaculture teacher in yeah. Bristol. Yeah. Um, there's a strong vegetarian streak. Inevitably, people who care about the environment and care about the planet. Yeah, yeah. What I think, you know, I'd agree on is that as a movement, it's looking at issues like agroforestry yes. and sustainable yeah. production systems. Yeah. Um, there needs to be, and I think with all of these constructive alternatives, yeah. there needs to be an edge of combativeness, if you like, yeah. to create a critical debate yes, yes. with the other side. Because, you know, to you and me, these solutions are pretty obvious. Yes, yes. And yet we still have uh, huge subsidies yeah. that are clearly leading to forests being yeah. chopped down and yeah. burned because yeah. it's carbon neutral. You yes, know, but yes. it's not carbon neutral if yeah. it takes 100 years yeah, yeah. for the trees to recapture yeah, that carbon. Yeah. That's not well, one problem has been that the uh, meat industry has created a mindset that you need for your health and you need for your energy extra amount of great amount of protein and the meat which gives you energy. Uh, I was invited to speak in a primary school, and one child asked me a question. What is your favorite animal? And I said, an elephant. So the child asked me, why? I said, elephant is vegetarian, and yet it can grow so big. So you don't have to eat meat yeah. to be big. And then the child asked me, and what's your fa- second favorite animal? And I said, a horse. Why? A horse is so powerful and yet 
is a vegetarian. So this idea which meat industry has given us that in order to be big and strong and energetic, you need to eat a lot of meat. How do we, uh, that mindset, that conditioning, that advertising which people have been fed, um, how do we combat that and make people think that you don't need so much meat um, to be strong and to be healthy? Well, a hamburger in the United States has cost 99 cents for the last 20 years. Yes. And the reason is because uh, agricultural policy yeah. subsidizes yeah. the feed for animals, yeah. everything, the whole supply chain to keep hamburgers cheap. Yeah. They don't subsidize vegetables. They yeah. don't subsidize tree fruits or nuts. They don't subsidize the foods that another branch of government says, eat more of this. Yes, yes. And so we end up you know, following the price signal, yeah, yeah. which is that you can go into a McDonald's and buy four yeah. hamburgers and yeah. milkshakes and Coca-Cola, yeah. and you're under $20. Yeah. But it's completely, the Coke is sweetened with subsidized corn syrup. The meat is fed on subsidized corn and soybeans. The whole process yes. is artificial. Yes. And you know, if, you, if you turned it around yeah. and said, okay, we won't subsidize anything, yeah. and we will charge yeah. the carbon, the embedded carbon yeah. in that. Yeah. Then a hamburger would be five or six dollars. Yes. yes. And a veggie burger would be two dollars. Yes. And then people would make, people their, would choices make their choice yeah. on a real yeah. and honest yeah. Yeah. basis, yeah. not an yeah. artificial yeah. basis. Yeah. 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 And I think that's that's the challenge because yeah. we're doing the right thing, yeah. but government is being controlled yeah. or influenced excessively yeah. by. Yeah people who are pushing for the wrong yeah, thing. Yeah. You were vice president of uh, the Soil Association and you have been organic uh, farmer and food uh, distributor and, and so many things. Now, um, still there is an organic idea of organic um, and organic food or organic agriculture, still a very small minority of farmers taking it up. Uh, still there is a strong attraction towards uh, large-scale farms big factory farms and and chemical use still strong. What do you think of why it is so uh, strong and why people are not being attracted towards organic and more uh, permaculture way of doing farming? I, I'm an optimist, yeah. uh, but I have been for quite a long time. Yes. And I just contain my disappointment. Yeah. Um, again, yeah. Government policy subsidizes yeah. industrial farming. Yes. In 1947, the Soil Association fought a desperate battle yes. to have Britain's future agriculture policy organic. Yeah. ICI yeah. fought, advertised massively, mm. and won the argument, mm. and the government subsidized a bag of chemical fertilizer, yeah. 10 shillings, 50p. Yeah. It was a lot of money in those yeah. days. So farmers went down the chemical route. The minute they did that, yeah. they started getting fungal diseases. Yeah. The weeds grew fantastically yeah. well with chemical yeah. fertilizers. Yeah. So they needed herbicides and fungicides, and they were mm. trapped. Yeah. And as any farmer who has converted back to organic, once you've done the damage, yeah. it's like healing any sickness. Yeah. Yeah. It takes time and you have to suffer yeah. in the process. Yeah. So, and the government doesn't do enough to alleviate that alleviate. suffering yeah. of farmers who want to convert. Yeah. Or it gives them a bit of money and then leaves them. Yeah. Um, so I think, again, yeah. it's the, the consumer, yeah. the customer, the... I like to use the word citizen, citizen customer, customer because yeah. people who are citizens of a society, yeah. the consumer is just thinking about themselves. Yeah. They look at the price, they stick it in their mouth. Yeah. The citizen thinks about the, the whole, whole story behind <clears throat> yeah. everything that they buy, everything that they do. And that, that mentality is emerging very strongly, yeah. I think. Yeah. And, it's there's a shared community and the internet helps with that yeah. that helps ideas to spread yeah. i mean i mentioned earlier boyka janus you know yeah. we have a blossoming relationship with the permaculture association in slovenia yes. who are uh applying biochar and developing a whole uh, network of biochar users and feeding back their results to us yeah. It's very exciting, and at Carbon Gold, where we supply her with yeah. that stuff, yeah. um, you know, we're 
we thought, why Slovenia? But it's just, you know, that happens to be one yeah. of many yeah. places yeah. where the permaculture idea, the organic idea, yeah. and the broader social and implications no are yeah. no dig. Yeah. That that's all beginning to really, yeah. Yeah. really make headway. Yeah. I mean, her book just came out. It's in Slovenian. I can't read it. Yeah. But it's a beautifully produced book. Well, and yeah, you just yeah. think, this is happening all over the world. Yeah, and yeah. today, of course... Is a, is, is a permaculture the, day. Yeah. So let us hope that um, uh, this day and as the um, weeks and months and years come, the idea of permaculture, of no dig uh, gardening, of natural farming, of Masanobu Fukuoka's message, of Bill Mollison's message, and, and Slovenian example, and many good examples of your biochar, all these things gain ground. But on the other hand, the powers of the corporations is so strong. So our movements, which are very idealistic and very visionary and have a, a strong um, ideals for caring of the earth. But when you take corporations such as Monsanto, who want to spread BT, um, you mentioned uh, corn and cotton and all mm. that. Um, and their power is so strong that, uh, say, for example, in the United States, um, uh, the lobbies, the lobbying power of companies like Monsanto and genetically engineered seeds is so powerful. Um, how our organic and permaculture movement can counter that kind of power? Well, if there are a few examples. Kenya mm -hmm. has just said no GM yeah. in our country yeah, because it's a nation of smallholder farmers. Yes. Yeah. They're going making huge progress in agroforestry yeah. and organic farming, yeah. and they they have cash crops yeah. and they have subsistence crops, so the yeah. farmers can make money and yeah. feed their family. So that's resilience. Yeah. You know, you you may not get the cash crop you know, for whatever reason, yeah. but you've still got the food to feed your family, and, and this is happening. Right across Europe, it's right right across the world. I mean, my yeah. experience with Green and Black's chocolate yeah. was when we started, yeah. we were working with smallholder farmers, yeah. and the whole mental paradigm was we have to industrialize cocoa production. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. need big plantations yeah. with barracks for the workers. Yes. And that's gone. That's gone. You yeah. know, the big chocolate companies have all realized that actually – Smallholders are better for them. It's yeah. better to have a resilient supply yeah. chain. Yeah. Uh, it, the reason it all went is because in Brazil, one quarter of the cocoa crop died in yeah. one year from a yeah. disease called witch's broom. Yeah. yeah. And they realized actually growing things yeah. like that yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah. If you look at the farm I was born on in Nebraska, yeah. Yeah. you know, my grandfather grew corn, yeah. oats, yeah. wheat, uh, he had chickens. He yeah. had cows. He had pigs. He, it was a, a biodiverse. It was a biodiverse system. Yeah. And nobody had to subsidize him. Yeah. He made good money yeah. every year. Yeah. Farming as a mixed farm business. Yeah. The reason we have this now is because the big corporations, as you said, agribusiness have, you know, big is beautiful. If you yeah. can sell, you know, and Roundup Ready, the whole GM system yeah. is predicated yeah. on getting rid of small farmers mm. and having massive yeah. production yeah. systems. Yeah. But then somebody actually has to pay. In yeah. Argentina, people are paying with all the diseases from yeah. Roundup. Yeah. In America, it's the taxpayer who pays. Yeah. In Europe, it's the taxpayer who pays. Most mm. of our tax, the CAP, Common Agriculture Policy Money, goes to the biggest farmers in Europe. Yeah. 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 Uh, the European auditors have refused to sign off the yeah. EU accounts yeah. because that money just disappears. Nobody, it's a fraud. Yeah. 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 And, but yeah. it's a fraud that affects all of yeah. us. We yeah. pay twice, once yeah. with our taxes and once with our crappy diet. You yeah. know? Yeah. And then, and with, and then, the uh, and then our health. Our health and, and, and the environment. environment. Yeah. yeah. And the problem, not only that, the problem also is it's a question of democracy. If you put millions of farmers and their livelihood and their crops and their seeds in the hands of few big corporations, then people have become dependent on these few corporations because these seeds cannot be <coughs> reused. Every season, uh, the farmers have to go back to the uh, big companies and big corporations to get their seeds. So the freedom of the farmer is taken away. 
and and they cannot save their seeds, they cannot reuse their seeds, and that to me is a big uh, deficit yeah. of this um, big corporations, <coughs> Monsanto type. Well, I think again, you know, and this is where World Permaculture Day is an example of the way that alternative structures. Yes. Are not just being created, yeah. but really thriving, prospering. Yes. The message is getting out there, yeah. and it's that that instigates change. Yes. And I absolutely. think you know we just have to yeah. keep doing the right yeah. thing. And uh, I agree with you that we have to keep uh, doing the right thing. And you don't know when the change will come. When the tipping point reaches, a large number of people have this consciousness of living close to nature and more uh, natural life, more organic life. Then change can come very quickly. I mean, well, who knew that uh, one day Nelson Mandela will be free and president, yeah. and and uh, uh, Barack Obama, a black man in the White House? Who knew uh, such big changes have taken place in the past? So I think that the the idea of a more close to nature, more organic, and more permaculture way of producing food uh, is is something which. Um, as you are an optimist, I'm also optimist. So let's hope that happens. Right, right on. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, and happy International Permaculture Day. Live local, grow local, eat local. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.